series featuring some of the leading practice management and business consultants in dentistry today. I'm Kathy Kincaid, Editor-in-Chief of DrBicuspid.com. Joining us this morning is Keith Dreyer, Vice President of Henry Schein Financial Services, Henry Schein Professional Practice Transitions, and Henry Schein Nationwide Dental Opportunities. In addition to his many activities supporting the dental industry, Keith lectures regularly to dental and medical school students and residents on associateships and practice financing acquisitions. Keith has also taught at New York University's Dental School Continuing Education Program and writes regularly for a number of dental and medical journals. Hi, Keith. Uh, thanks for finding a few minutes in your busy schedule to chat with us today. Good morning, Kathy. Thank you. Good to be with you. So, um, so let's just jump right in. Um, uh, you know, for a young dentist just starting out, there's uh, so much to learn beyond what they gleaned during four years of dental school, especially when it comes to the business side of dentistry. So let me ask you, um, during dental school, uh, the students focus primarily on clinical aspects and passing the boards with, with not so much class time devoted to the business of dentistry, things like handling human resources and um, running their business. So how, do you go, how do they go about learning the business side of dentistry before actually starting to practice? Kathy, you are spot on. There are so many more clinical demands on the students today than in any prior generation. And the future is really exciting on the clinical side with genetics and gene therapy and individual treatment. And it's just the things that we're going to see in this generation of dentists is so exciting. That said, you're right, there's so little time for other things in dental school. They're turning out the best generation of clinicians ever, but there's no six months we're going to give you a small, uh, a mini MBA or you're going to be a small business owner and employ. 10 people and you know, even practitioners out there today, they know OSHA, but do they know ERISA? There's so much to know about running a business and I think the, it really comes down to advisors and who is in your, who are you going to work with and who's in your circle and who's in your corner to help you along the journey. Just like a general practitioner knows when it's the right time to bring in the endo specialist, the perio, the oral surgeon, a, denti a dentist needs to have a team of experienced people that know healthcare practitioner financing, that uh, a legal team, an accounting team that don't just work with overall small businesses that really have a dental niche because dentists and are different kind of small businesses. They're important small businesses to our country, but they're very different and have unique needs. So you mentioned um, advisors. How do you how how does someone go about figuring out what kinds of advisors they need? Are, and I assume you're talking more about um, on the business side of things. How do you find somebody that you can trust and that you you know with the, with some of the business aspects of your of running a practice? Sure, it's it's experience. Uh, again, there are, sure, there are a lot of qualified accountants out there, and uh, you know, bankers all say today, especially, hey, we want to lend money. We like small businesses, but uh, those lenders really know and understand a dentist. Uh, the amount of school debt dentists are coming out with is greater today than ever. That trend is not your friend, it's continuing. So some lenders are say, oh, this is a highly leveraged uh, person at the start. I don't want to lend them money. But the people that are focused on this niche, on healthcare lending, say, looking at it a totally different way. They know that uh, dentistry really is providing the best overall um, success rate of any business. I mean, it's no surprise. Take a restaurant. 50% of new restaurants fail within a year or so. But dental practices perform very well. There's a lot of underserved areas today. So a lender that knows dentistry, that knows that despite the student loan debt, that a dentist can get ahead. And even though most people, the, the greatest path, of course, is going on to an associateship. And it, it's, you know, for most people, it's the right option. They, they gain speed, confidence. Uh, they're under the eye of somebody else. They learn that business aspects of dentistry. But there are lenders that actually are, 
you know, who like Henry Schein, and there are lots of it, others I admit, that do know and focus solely on healthcare practitioners. So there is capital available, but again, it depends if you're going to find the right people to work with. Well, and you mentioned the 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 loan debt issue. I mean, with with dental loan school loan debt on the rise, um, what kinds of options are available to younger dentists to address that debt in a way that enables them to still make a living and build their career? Right. You know, fortunately, when you graduate dental school, you have the world of options out there. Uh, you can start giving back immediately. There are you know government and other programs and incentives for people for to do some kind of loan forgiveness or defer loans, uh, whether they're working in underserved areas. Uh, there's the associateship path. There's the ownership path. Uh, we do see people buying 50% of a practice right out of the gate. And again, once you're working with a knowledgeable lender that focuses on health care, there are, the options are open. One of the things that I try when I'm to work with uh, young young students and uh, dental school students and residents is really making sure that they learn to protect their credit while in school because that's the one thing that can really help them not help them that can hinder their ability to get ahead because if a lender is looking at somebody and they seem irresponsible and they have a terrible FICO score, a credit score. Uh, FICO is a credit score. It's used how people decide to make credit decisions on you. That file contains information not only where you live, but it's really how you pay your bills, if anybody has sued you. So this credit bureau is actually used by lenders, insurance companies. People will pay higher insurance, auto insurance rates because they have a bad credit score, believe it or not. But so as long as people aren't striking out before they get up to bat, there's lots of options today. Well, and and speaking of options, what about a younger dentist that's um, interested in owning their own practice? What kinds of financial options are available to them? Uh, somebody who wants to own their own practice is still a terrific thing. Uh, owning a practice is a great way to financially get ahead as well as open up a practice, whether it's in a rural town, in a city, to be an employer of other people, to make your own decisions, to equip the practice as you deem fit. If you're a high-tech person and you want a state-of-the-art high-technology practice, starting up it might be the right option for you. So uh, it depends on what's your long-term plan and you should have your objectives. You don't have to know exactly where you're going to be in 10 years or five years, but just to have a general idea. And again, seek mentors, whether they're existing clinicians out there or people that have helped other dentists be successful. And that's what we do. We're really, that's our business. It's really helping our, our, patient, our customers be successful and run successful practices. And so are there advantages to going into public health dentistry? Public health is one of the best ways of giving back. I mean, there it's clear there's a big demand. Uh, there's so there's a lot of people that don't have a dentist of their own that don't say, I'm going to Kath, talk to Kathy. Um, and you know, the more supply of people who go into public health, the better. Again, there are some programs that might offer debt forgiveness. It's a great way of gaining experience, speed, confidence. The, the kind of cases you do, uh, every dentist that I know that has gone to, into public health, whether short term or long term, really feels great about that decision because they're giving back and it's really the right thing to do. You know, I, I'm curious too, are there um, different kinds of opportunities depending on what region of the country you're in? Are you seeing that from your perspective? Absolutely. One of one of Henry Schein's businesses is our is Nationwide Dental Opportunities, which is our associate placement and recruitment. So we're getting we're working with uh, established doctors seeking candidates truly in all 50 states. And yes, there are supply and demand imbalances in certain markets. Uh, there are certain quote, hot markets that 
the supply and demand that that's still tons of dentists chasing fewer associate positions and there's the other kind of markets that people may aren't giving a second look at but the quality of life could be really strong there's you know the economic upside could be really strong but this also goes back to thinking about any kind of associateship offer is the doctor making the decision with their spouse or significant other and really going ending up in a place that's really well, the right thing for their family their and themselves well um, in the last couple of minutes here I don't know do you have any final thoughts or recommendations um, that you would would want to share with our listeners again it's important to have the right advisors it's important to set out your own objectives and when you're looking at any opportunity to think about the other person think about the senior doctor if you're going to become an associate why are they bringing the associate into the practice because at the end of the day often mo the majority of times uh, a doctor will sign a non-compete and a non-compete is really covers a geographic region or a period of time and if things don't go well and it, it, it's, it's the min minority of times if things don't go well um, it's not the senior doctor that's going to end up getting picking up and moving because it didn't work out so that's why take your time work with the right people mentors advisors they're there uh, in, at Henry Schein we have a mentoring program I work with young uh, TSM's as we call them just make sure you have the right people and if you ask a, a senior doctor if you ask people in the industry they're more than happy to help you because everybody wants to see them be successful at the end of the day well that's some great advice Keith I really appreciate you taking a few minutes to uh, to, to share your expertise and um, and uh, uh, so that's going to do it for this episode of 15 Minutes to Excellence. If you have any additional questions, please uh, don't hesitate to email us at editorial at drbycuspid.com, and we'll try to connect you with, um, with uh, one of our experts. Um, thanks again, Keith, and uh, that'll do it for today. Thank you, Kathy. Bye.